Hi there, and welcome to another lesson on IELTS Band 7 Plus vocabulary. This is Lesson 3, Health, and I'm Lee from IELTS Master. Are you ready to get started? I am. Let's go. Before we get started with this lesson, let's talk about the structure of the vocabulary course. I believe that in order to really learn vocabulary, you need to know words in a deep, deep way. So, for each word that we present, we'll give you the definition, sometimes with notes, but always with example sentences. We'll give you collocations. This means words that often go together. And finally, we'll give you an action step to end each lesson, something you can do to help you remember the words. So, the words we have for this lesson are number one, health, number two, diet, number three, solution, number four, evidence, and number five, effect. Of course, you probably know these words, but remember, we're focusing on collocations, what words go together and make you sound like an advanced speaker of English. Number one, health. I hope you know this word, but just in case, the definition is the condition of a person's body or mind. And related words include healthy. Example sentences. Number one, play can have a profound effect on both the mental and physical health of children. We have a couple of interesting things in this sentence. First, what is profound? Profound, as you'll find out later, means big. And physical and mental, or mental and physical, are coming together. This is a nice collocation for health as well. Example number two. Countries often dedicate a large amount of resources into keeping their economy healthy. We're using healthy instead of health, and this time we're collocating with economy. So there's a collocation with economy. Economic health is another way to say keeping the economy healthy. Let's look at some more collocations. On the top right, we have mental health. Right? This is how good your head is, how healthy you are mentally. Next, public health. This is the overall health of the society, public health. Next, physical health, the health of your body, physical health. Going to the other side, healthy economy, healthy economy. And next, health care. When you go see a doctor, you're receiving health care. And last, health and safety. These words go together very often health and safety. For example, in a workplace, in a job, there are lots of health and safety regulations or rules. Got it? Great. Next one. Number two, diet. You probably also know this word, but just in case, the definition is the food that you eat and drink regularly. A limited variety or amount of food that you eat for medical reasons or because you want to lose weight. So there are two definitions here. Definition one is just the food that you eat every day. And definition number two is what people do sometimes during the New Year's. They go on a diet. They eat the special food, perhaps because they want to lose weight, perhaps because they want to become healthier, or maybe they even want to gain weight or muscle. So they go on a special diet. Some example sentences. Many countries around the world, both developing and developed, struggle with poor diet and the health issues that result from it. And sentence number two, last year I went on a strict diet of only rice for three weeks as a way to lose weight. Now notice in sentence number two we have went on and diet all underlined. This is a nice collocation to remember, to go on a diet, go on a diet. Other collocations, we have healthy diet, on a diet, so go on a diet. You don't go to a diet or go for a diet, you go on a diet. 
we have balanced diet. A balanced diet is a good diet because it has a nice balance of healthy foods. It's not only protein, not only meat and eggs and those things. And it's not only carbohydrates, which is like rice and bread or fruit. And it's not only fat. It's a nice balanced mix of the three. We also have poor diet. This is a better way to say bad diet. So poor diet is a higher level way to say bad diet. Also, special diet. You know what this means? And finally, strict diet. If you only eat a certain food for a few weeks, or maybe you have to have this much food or only a little bit of food every time you eat, then you're on a strict diet. Number three, word number three, solution. Solution is a way of solving a problem or dealing with a difficult situation. And related words, of course, to solve, which is the verb. Example number one, one possible but perhaps not practical solution for climate change is to stop using cars immediately. Okay, this is possible but probably not practical. Tomorrow, we can't stop using cars, but it may be a solution for climate change. And example sentence number two, I've spent the majority of my career attempting to find a solution to everyday traffic congestion. What's traffic congestion? This means lots of cars stuck in one area can't move very quickly. For example, on your way to work in the morning or on your way home in the evening. And the second sentence, it's probably not something you would write for an IELTS writing task, but it's definitely something you could say in your interview for speaking. Collocations for solution. First, find solution or find a solution. Find solutions. Next, only solution. This is quite common. It's the only solution. This is the only thing we can do, the only way to solve the problem. It's the only solution. Next, solution to. Solution to a problem. Not solution by a problem. Sometimes solution for a problem. Solution to a problem is the most common. Next, possible solution. It's a possible solution or it's one of many possible solutions. Next, a radical solution. What's radical mean? Radical is kind of crazy, kind of different, kind of strange, but it might work. A radical solution. A radical solution to global poverty could be giving everybody $10,000. It's a radical solution. A little bit crazy, but it might work. And finally, no solution. It's very common to say there is no solution to such and such. For example, there is no solution to global warming or global poverty or something like that. These are the collocations for solution. Number four, evidence. Definition is the facts signs or objects that make you believe that something is true. An example sentence number one, despite what many people may say, there is still little evidence for the existence of intelligent life beyond earth. Sentence number two, recent evidence suggests that Europeans were not the first population to reach the American continent by boat. Let's take a quick look at these sentences. What does intelligent life mean in sentence number one? Do you know? It means alien life. Aliens like people from beyond space, from different planets. And the second sentence, who were or who was the first population to reach the American continent by boat? Well, we're not 100% sure, but a lot of evidence points to Chinese sailors reaching the American continent before European sailors. Collocations. Evidence. First, we have to provide or to give evidence. Also, to show evidence. Next, little evidence. This is the same as saying not much evidence. 
and it's a very high level, nice collocation. Next, evidence suggests. If you listen, maybe about 30 seconds ago, I actually used this collocation in my own speech. The evidence suggests that this could be true or that that could be a real solution. Next, sufficient evidence. What does sufficient mean? Sufficient means enough. So if you have sufficient evidence, you have enough evidence for something to be considered true. Strong evidence. Strong evidence is exactly what it sounds like. And finally, evidence for. You don't have evidence by, you don't have evidence to, you have evidence for something. Evidence for intelligent life. All right, next, number five, the last word for this lesson, effect. Another easy word, but the collocations for this word are very important and very useful. The definition of effect is a change that somebody or something causes in somebody or something else, or a result. And please remember, please don't make this mistake, effect is the verb with an A, and effect, pronunciation is the same, but E and A. A is the verb, E is the noun. Don't mix them up. Make sure you get them correct in your writing, especially. Example sentences. Number one, the food we eat has a profound effect on our health and energy levels. Profound. What does that mean again? Do you remember? It means big. Next, exercising too much can have an adverse effect on health and should be avoided. Adverse means bad or negative. Now, you might notice that sometimes I say effect and sometimes I say effect. E or a. Uh. It doesn't matter. You can choose. Both of them are equally okay. Collocations for effect or effect. First, have effect on or have effect of. These are a little bit different. Have effect of refers to what kind of effect it has. For example, eating too many carrots can have the effect of turning your skin orange. Now, have effect on refers to something a little bit different. For example, eating carrots has an effect on the color of your skin. Next one, produce an effect or produce effect. A healthy diet can produce a good effect on your long term health and well-being. Next, a significant or profound effect. We used profound effect a few times in this video and significant effect is very similar. A beneficial effect is a good effect. So instead of writing good effect or instead of saying good effect, you can say beneficial effect. Next, adverse. That's the opposite, a bad effect or a negative effect. Adverse is a much nicer, a much more high-level way to say bad or negative. And finally, long-term effect. A long-term effect. For example, injuries or getting hurt when a person is young can have a long-term effect on their ability to walk and enjoy an active life. And that wraps us up with the final word and the final collocations for this lesson. So your action step this lesson is to use each word that we covered to write two sentences and post your sentences in the comments below. Be sure to use the collocations we introduced whenever you can. Now remember, collocation means words that often go together. Good luck. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. For more IELTS practice, visit IELTSmaster.com and join our email list for a free Task 2 ebook. You can also connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash site. Finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel below and let us know what would you like to see next. Just type it in the comments. And you never know, 
that may be the next video. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.